which was mostly related to money laundering issues, Pakistan submitted three progress reports in total. I am very pleased to announce that Pakistan has completed the entire seven-point action plan a year ahead of the given timelines. This speaks volumes about the comprehensive reforms that have been carried out in Pakistan in the AML CFT domain and the sustained momentum of our efforts and the result of the efforts also. Because as you can see, the first action plan took us much longer. This action plan we have actually ended before timeline. And this is something which was very well recognized throughout the plenary by all the members. Pakistan's positive and speedy progress was greatly appreciated and welcomed by FATF members. Now FATF has acknowledged completion of both action plans by Pakistan. The progress made and recognized by our commitment to uh, improve our AML CFT systems. Consequent to the fruitful discussions held in the plenary, the FATF has decided by consensus that Pakistan has addressed all technical benchmarks and has completed all requirements of both action plans, that of 2018 and that of 2021. As a result of this, what we consider to be no less than a Herculean speed and a remarkable achievement, FATF has now authorized an on-site visit of its technical team to Pakistan to validate the process of implementation of reforms. Now let me emphasize over here because there might be some confusion. This is part of the procedure of, de of taking Pakistan out of the grey list. When you authorize a country's removal from the grey list, the second step is, or the first step is, that you authorize an on-site technical evaluation which has been done in this plenary. The successful completion of FATF action plans and its formal endorsement uh, by FATF means that Pakistan is one step away from exiting the grey list, inshallah. The on-site visit is a procedural requirement. It marks the beginning of the end process that will eventually culminate in the exit of Pakistan from the FATF's grey list, inshallah, and hopefully forever. We are closely working with FATF to arrange the on-site visit at mutually convenient dates with a view to conclude the entire process before the October plenary 2022. During our inter interactions on the sidelines of the FATF plenary, we stress Pakistan's, high, Pakistan's high level political commitment to strengthen our AML CFT regime and bring it at par with global standards. We have been highlighting complete national consensus and I cannot emphasize on this enough. And I can assure you that it is this, this government's commitment that we will take this forward with national consensus. And we will celebrate the national consensus, inshallah. I want to take this opportunity to also stress once again that Pakistan's cooperation with FATF and the international community is grounded in our strategic objective, in our own strategic objective of strengthening our economy and improving the integ its integration with the international financial system. I'm confident that with this good news from FATF, it will restore confidence in our economy and will give us a much needed boost. Improve investment climate and a robust AML CFT compliance systems. I also want to acknowledge, in fact, I really want to emphasize on the tireless efforts of our teams who have really done a tremendous job and burnt the midnight oil in achieving all of these strenuous, difficult, complicated targets. This is indeed a whole of country response, uh, and I think that is something to celebrate. Multiple departments, agencies, both at the federal and provincial levels have contributed to this national cause. It also demonstrates that when we work together, all of country, all of nation, we can achieve sometimes what is considered to be impossible. I also want to say that this is going to be a cross-government effort. Uh, I really want to emphasize that because I know a lot of talk has been done about it. Uh, this is an effort for the state of Pakistan. Uh, governments will come and go, but Pakistan's consensus and Pakistan's efforts on this, I hope, will continue in stride. I want to convey our gratitude to our international partners and friends for their understanding, for their constant support and cooperation throughout this lengthy, arduous process. By the grace of Allah, Pakistan is in a position now that it can, it can not only can it sustain its trajectory of reforms well into the future, but also really, we'll, and that's what we look forward to, provide guidance and technical support to other countries in this area. We feel we are a little bit ahead of the curve. In fact, we are quite ahead of the curve. We want to sustain that. We want to sustain that place 
continue to be ahead of the curve, to remain there. Um, and really be, in some ways, a, a, a model for other countries to follow. I know that we are far ahead within the financial regulatory systems, um, within CFT uh, legislation, uh, within AML legislation, within the PAC, within the region, but we're also looking very good when you, do, when you compare us against international benchmarks. And I'm sure that we will be fully prepared for on-site with it, and we will exit the gray list at the earliest, inshallah. Um, with that, I come to the end of my statement, but I want to emphasize over here one thing that we, as a nation, must uh, remember and uh, respect. Uh, that is some issues related to the confidentiality requirements within this. In the past, I want to emphasize this um, at the very outset. In the past, our urge to share news has harmed us. Okay, so I hope you noticed that we were very, very careful in allowing the plenary to f take the decision, to announce the decision, because you can never prejudge. Uh, and any time you try to prejudge and speak before your time, it has always come back to hurt you. So this, as a nation, not only as a government, is something that we need to do well in order to complete the start of the end. And this will not be the end, because this will be, inshallah, then a new beginning, where Pakistan is... Uh, looking towards strengthening its own systems according to its own requirements and get out of the requirements of having to report to others but continue to report to itself. Thank you, Madam Minister. Uh, I am here to facilitate the questions and answers <coughs> session. Uh, I already see a lot of and My only request would be when you pose a question, please identify yourself and please restrict yourself to uh, one question per person so that everyone has a chance. Yes, sir, please. So, Hilbert from the Asian Telegraph. Sir, Pakistan was given a 27 point agenda in 2018 and another in 2021. As FATF recognized that it was unprecedented and a huge burden on a single country to implement two action plans. Yes. It was quite unprecedented. Uh, we were, in fact, uh, the only country which has had two simultaneous action plans to implement. And that's why I said it was tedious, it was arduous, it was difficult, it was technically requirements were cross-agency, cross-institutions. Um, uh, there was legal frameworks to take care of. There were amendments to do. And then there was institutionalization of those amendments, uh, of, 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 of the new laws. Uh, building of structures, building of systems. So really, I think we have... We can, uh, it's too early to celebrate because I genuinely believe that once, you know, you can't prejudge anything. Uh, we have an on-site visit, but we have started the process, as I said. Uh, and within that context, uh, yes, we were the only country ever in the history of FATF to go through two simultaneous plans, action plans at the same time, one of 2021 and uh, one of 2018, as you well know, for, uh, you know, workable working points altogether. Mr. Jaz. Second row. मैं पाकिस्तान की जब भी एफएटीएफ के इलाज में गया तो पाकिस्तान होपफुल होता था कि इस प्रतिबंध हम निकल जाएंगे लेकिन ये बहुत लॉन्ग जर्नी तय करना पड़ा वो कौन से की इश्यूज थे या की प्रॉब्लम्स थे जिनकी वजह से ये इतना टाइम लगा और क्या जैसा हम सुनते हैं यहाँ इस्लामाबाद में बैठ करके फला मुल्क का इन्फ्लुएंस है फला का इन्फ्लुएंस है क्या कोई पॉलिटिकल इन्फ्लुएंस इस किस्म का था जो हर्डल रहा या हम कहीं चीज कुछ चीजों में लैक करते थे देखें आई थिंक एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम वी कैन बी पॉजिटिव अबाउट अर्जन we have the luxury to be positive about our journey because uh, take, give and take, eventually whatever we did was in Pakistan's interest. It strengthened Pakistan's systems to enable Pakistan to be a responsible, to be seen and to be also a responsible country, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, in some ways providing a model of legal framework now to the world. We have always emphasized that FATF must remain apolitical and technical and impartial, obviously. This is an emphasis that we have always done at every interaction that we've had, and uh, we would hope that will continue. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, why did it not happen before? This was a very intensive process. The uh, action plan was uh, m minutely detailed. It required many, many actions, as I've just explained, at many, many different levels. So it was obviously time-consuming. 
جہاں تک آپ کا سوال تھا کہ ہم ہمیشہ ہوپفل رہتے ہوتے تھے میرے نظر میں آپ کو پرپیر you should be prepared for the worst and hope for the best and I hope you saw some of that being reflected how this government took this up because you need to be and this preparation was over the last many years so we absolutely are willing to share credit with whoever wants you know a piece of the pie ہم تنگے دینے کے لیے بھی تیار ہیں جن کو کریڈٹ چاہیے I think this is a battle for Pakistan this is not a battle for any anyone any you know anyone at all second row Imran sir محمد عمران دنیا ٹی وی سے میں ابھی آپ نے کہا کہ جو ایک ڈیبیٹ چل رہی ہے کریڈٹ کی سوالے سے ابھی آپ نے کہا کہ جو کریڈٹ لینا چاہتا ہم دینے کے بھی تیار ہیں ہوں تم میں بھی دینے کے لیے تیار ہیں تو جب یہ ساری لیجسلیشن ہو رہی تھی جب پروسس ہو رہا تھا تو اس لیجسلیشن کے دوران تو پی ڈی ایم جس کا آپ پارٹ ان پارٹ سے تھی تو وہ بائک آٹ کرتا رہا واک آٹ کرتے رہے تو پھر اب جا کر اس کو ریاست کا فیصلہ اور ریاست کی وکٹری ڈیکلیئر کر رہی ہیں تو اس وقت انڈرسٹینڈنگ نہیں تھی کہ یہ ریاست کے لیے بہت ضروری ہے اس لیجسلیشن کو پاس کرنا نہیں دیکھیں وہ ہی لیجسلیشن ہم نے کمیٹیز میں پارلیمنٹری کمیٹیز میں پاس کی اپوزیشن نے مل کے پاس کی ہمیں طریقہ کار سے پرابلم تھی بکوز بلڈوز کرنا اور جو آپ بات کریں کہ کنسنسس بلڈ کرنا اس کے ساتھ میں انگیج کرنا وہ سب کچھ نہیں ہوا بٹ لیٹ بائی گونز بھی بائی گونز آئی تنک پاکستان شوڈ بی فورڈ لکنگ پاکستان شوڈ بی فوکسٹ پاکستان شوڈ ہیو آل آف گورنمنٹ اپروچ پاکستان شوڈ ہیو آل آف نیشن اپروچ اینڈ دیٹس وائی ایم سینگ لیٹس ناٹ بوائے یو نو باگ آر سیلز ڈاؤن ود دیز انسیسری ڈیبیٹس دیر انسیسری دیر ایف اینی تھنگ دے ڈونٹ برنگ اینی گڈ سو میں یہ کہہ رہی ہوں کہ میں صرف کریڈٹ اگر دوں گی تو اپنی ٹیم کو دوں گی اور ٹیم اپنی جب میں کہتی ہوں میں پاکستان کی ٹیم کہتی ہوں کیونکہ ابھی ہم گورنمنٹ ریپرزینٹ کر رہے ہیں وی آر ریپرزینٹنگ دا اسٹیٹ آف پاکستان رائٹ ناؤ سو آئی ووڈ گیو کریڈٹ ٹو ایوری ممبر آف دا ٹیم دوز ہو آر سیلیبریٹڈ ہو آر وزیبل ان فرنٹ آف یو اینڈ دوز ہو آر ناٹ ہو آر ان دا بیک گراؤنڈ اینڈ پر ہیپ پر ہیپس دا ونس ان دا بیک گراؤنڈ ڈو مچ مور ورک دین دا ونس دیٹ آر وزیبل سو آئی ووڈ ریئلی آئی نو ہاؤ مچ ورک ہیز گون انٹو اٹ بائی ویریس ایجنسیز بائی ویریس اینٹیز So I think we need to, and having said that, I still need to say, let's, let's not be overly uh, celebratory right now. Na? Matlab, we still have, the uh, process has started, but abhi, uh, the on-site visit is due. And after uh, that, uh, our journey will continue. Kar rahi. This uh, strengthening of legislation, strengthening of administration will continue. Adil sir, followed by Anas. This is Adil Bashir from Rose News. The first question is, do you think that there was a political motivation for keeping Pakistan on the grey list for such a long time? The other one is, was there an issue in our foreign policy due to which Pakistan was placed on the grey list? Were we not able to present our case before FATF in an effective manner? Thank you. Again, I will desist from commenting on anything which casts a negative light on any effort that has been done uh, at all. So I will skip your last two questions and come to your first question. Was, it, uh, was Pakistan's grey listing in any way political? Uh, as I said, we have always emphasized that FATF must remain apolitical in its conduct because it's an important body, it has an important work to do. However, we do know that there were certain countries involved, a certain singular country at least that we all can name and emphasize which has always tried to make this process a political one and which has um, been a spanner in the wheels. And to uh, realize that that certain countries, in the presence of that certain country, we got this through consensus uh, is an important point. So we had to be more white than others, for sure. Uh, but that means we, uh, that just shows you how much, uh, meaning how much we have attained, how much we, how much we have achieved. Anas. Thank you so much, spokesperson. Anas Malimam. Uh, my question is for you uh, that in the, upon the conclusion of the February 2019 plenary, uh, we saw a statement com coming in from the FATF that specified that Pakistan needs to take action, uh, particularly on counter-terror financing, against 34 individuals of eight organizations of concern. And those organizations were named, namely Al-Qaeda, lashkar e taiba jamaat ud dawa jaish e mohammad adar tehreek e taliban afghanistan the haqqani network now my question is very specific what has pakistan done against these 34 individuals as specified by the fatf to convince them number one 
And number two, yesterday we saw in the press conference by the FATF president that it called for an irreversible action. So what is Pakistan going to do ahead of the visit, of the on-site visit, to convince them that yes, this action is irre irreversible? Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's get the facts correct. Okay. Uh, Pakistan doesn't need to do anything from now until on-site visit. What Pakistan needs to do is to prepare itself for an on-site visit which is going to be technical evaluation of all the claims that Pakistan has made, which have been accepted. Uh, as I said, all action plan items have been ticked off. Largely addressed, nothing is pending on behalf on, on, on Pakistan to do. No actions are pending on Pakistan to do. Now, when it comes to uh, the specifics of uh, you know, clearly we did enough uh, to get a green light on this, right? That we ticked all the boxes. And uh, within that context, I just want to say that let it be, let's be clear. I think when it comes to the prosecution, going after people, anyone who's involved in terror, terrorist, terrorism financing, that's an agenda that Pakistan has also. It's a national agenda also. So when does the country do well. A country is able to do well within the international framework when its domestic agenda and international agenda is aligned. I feel it is aligned. So we're not doing anything for anyone. We're doing it for Pakistan and in the process we're ensuring that our economy also gets the boost because no country, and this question was asked to me in Berlin also, no country would ever like to be on the grey list. It has repercussions, it has ramifications, and no country would choose to remain on the grey list. Take one question from there, uh, Kamran, followed by uh, Ms. Roma. Sir. My name is Kamran Raja, and I have two questions. Uh, recently, Pakistan got a good news from FATF, and, uh, which leads Pakistan to exit from the FATF grey list. And uh, second, uh, my question is, do you see the role of any specific political party or institution in completing our FATF action plans? And my second question is that, what actions have been taken to enable our institutions to meet the future challenges in the anti-money laundering and CFT, combating financial terrorism? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't quite understand your last question, second question. What actions are going to be taken? Gee, as I said, for anti-money laundering and for combating financial terrorism. Okay. Uh, I think it's less about specific actions and more about the framework that you built, right? As I said, there were lots of issues that, you know, there was a lot of work that went into it. If you look at the list of amendments and new legislation that we had to do, it's actually like 50, 30 plus. Altogether. Some at the provincial level, some at the national level, some at various levels. Now, you can't just do legislation. You also have to make sure that the legislation is implementable. For that, you have to work on the institutions that are going to implement it, create different frameworks, create different bodies. So this has been a very intensive process. I think what we have now is a good body of work, of legislation, and institutional strengthening that exists for us to have a speed of our own. And as I mentioned to you earlier, what we would want is, what is an ideal scenario for Pakistan? That Pakistan gets out of the vagaries of reporting to an international agency, and gets into reporting to its own system and working within its own legal framework uh, to achieve what we consider to be national priorities also. As I said, they're aligned over here. They're not a counter uh, to our national priorities in any way. Or your first question was any institution. I said it at the very outset. Uh, I think uh, in the last 20 years of having been in this space, there's one thing that I've learned. There's no limit to what you can achieve if you don't care who gets the credit. As on behalf of the Foreign Office of Pakistan, the nation, every, many institutions, uh, pretty much, when, I, when we say national consensus, we're referring to the parliament, we're referring to everyone. We are saying this is a Pakistan win. Uh, we let it remain a Pakistan win. Yeah? Zishan, over there. Uh, Zishan Bhatti from PTV News. Uh, India has been leaking reports of, of FATF in violation of uh, FATF rules. Has Pakistan raised this issue with FATF? And secondly, what lessons have been learned by Pakistan during the last four years in this process? Okay, the, the second question can take a whole day. <laughs> I think we learned many lessons and uh, the one, perhaps the biggest lesson that we've learned is that uh, it is wise to ensure 
for instance, in the fact of, you know, in interacting with people, um, I said the message from Pakistan is never again. That's a lesson learned. Never again will we want to be part of any list which requires us to divert our attention from our national you know, requirements to just reporting requirements. Uh, so never again is the lesson that we've learned, that we never want to slip into this again. Uh, that's the biggest lesson. Um, on confidentiality rules, what do you think is the answer? Of course we did. And uh, within that context, I have to say we, I feel, covered some ground. Because I think it is a very, okay, why are we so respectful of this? Why are we so respectful of the fact that we don't share information which is not meant to be shared? Because there are very strong confidentiality rules. FATF takes it very, very seriously. So you're actually endangering the credibility of the country when you do that. Now, that certain country that you mentioned has openly been doing it, okay, and has been openly caught doing it. Uh, and uh, there is obviously a great deal of, I think, understanding amongst other members that that is incorrect and should not happen. But we, even within that context, I say, let's concentrate on the positive, let's concentrate on what we've been able to do, and that is an area that we are taking care of, that we are taking up with everyone, that we are raising uh, at every forum. Uh, first row, Shabir. So, uh, as we know that, uh, uh, I'm Shabir Wagra from PD World, as we know that different ministries play a role in this whole process. So, what role Ministry of Foreign Affairs has uh, played during Pakistan's grey listing? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, now, how these responsibilities has changed uh, with the delegation of all the responsibilities on you as Minister of State being the in charge? Well, um, what, how that response? I think Ministry of Foreign Affairs has actually been playing a role even when its minister or minister of state was not uh, leading uh, the National Steering Committee. Uh, I think you, most of you might be very well aware of it. We were playing the critical ro role throughout this process in the last four years. The ministry was actually housing all the major or the lead agency in all the major interactions. Um, sometimes, like many of us, going beyond the call of duty, uh, I know our uh, DGCT and different people have taken that role and the one who is currently there, you know, uh, Amare, uh, the, all the officers within that team. Uh, I'm actually very, very impressed when I get any briefing from them, when I see them work, when, when, uh, and knowing how much hard work they put in and how ahead of the curve they are. So, uh, to me, obviously, this ministry has played a critical, a pivotal role in the strategic planning, in their interagency work, in the interprovincial coordination sometimes. Sometimes having to go down to, you know, I don't want to again go into the details, but uh, allow me to say that, uh, yes, we have played a critical role. We will continue to play uh, in a, a, a very, you know, a, a critical or, or a crucial role. Um, and as I said, I think it's very important, it's exceptionally important that we recognize everyone's efforts in this. Uh, this could not have been done by any single entity, ministry, institution, foreign affairs, anyone. Had you said, okay, well, we will take care of anything, uh, virtually impossible to do it. So yes, we've been playing a critical role and inshallah we will continue to play in effect. Question role. from the gentleman in the first row, uh, followed by Mr. Pracha in the last row. Uh, we were watching this uh, legislation work in the context of uh, FATF, and then there was an institutional format that was coming up. And I personally saw that there was some policy reluctance and capacity deficiency. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Policy reluctance and uh, capacity deficiency. They can policy reluctance and capacity deficiency are part of life, right? And you always keep on wanting to strengthen the deficiencies that exist. Uh, as I, when I say that we are now not only comparable to international s uh, standards, but ahead of international standards. So if you look at overall factor of recommendations and where Pakistan stands and where some of the developed countries stand, you will be shocked. We are ahead of the curve in many ways. Now the challenge for us is, is to continue with this momentum, inshallah, even after we are out of this process. That is the challenge for Pakistan and that is also the concern that has been raised. And for that, institutionalization of this whole process is exceptionally important. So I think from now onwards, we have to strengthen the institutions whose core responsibility, you know, DG Sabiyan Bethe mein, jinki core responsibility is process ko aage 
लेके जाना होगा एंड बाय द वे इन आंसर टू दैट क्वेश्चन ऑब्वियसली वी कॉन्ट मिस आउट द यू नो द फॉरन अफेयर्स बिकॉज आई थिंक वी वर डूइंग सो मच विच वॉज नॉट आर कोर रोल दैट आई मैंशन ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड नॉट मैंशन द इंटेंसिव डिप्लोमेटिक वर्क दैट वी हैड टू डू एट द लेवल ऑफ द फॉरन मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो यू नो कंसिस्टेंटली परसिस्टेंटली एवरी इंटरेक्शन दैट वी हैव एवरी कैपिटल and this diplomatic work happens from top down matlab all of government approach hoti hai but so i i think the role of the diplomatic uh, reach uh, outreach that we did uh, is quite substantial i would uh, weigh on it very heavily because you can have a very good case but you also have to have to present the good case in a good way uh, i i think we can okay Thank you, Madam, for MOS. Glad to find you back in the leadership role of this ministry. Uh, when we say, जब हम ये कहते हैं कि on-site inspection के लिए team आएगी, वो क्या देखने आएंगे? क्या जेलों में बंद लोगों को देखने आएंगे कि वाकई वो बंद हैं या कोई ऐसा structure खड़ा है जिसको आपकी हुकूमत ने papers में या पाकिस्तान की रियासत ने papers में dismantle किया है? क्या वो देखने आएंगे? Secondly. Uh, since it's a matter of counter terrorism uh, whether there was any concern about uh, ongoing talks in kabul or peshawar with the uh, ttp person because the ultimate goal is to fight out terrorist entities not to negotiate with them thank you sure interesting questions on the second question i will just say before as you know uh, fatf is supposed to be completely technical body <clears throat> right once you go into Uh, you know through a process once you nominated to be relisted there is a process